Welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. This is your boy, Brother Vince. And man, I'm back at you again with another episode of Vet Talk. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. All right, man. So today, man, we're going to be talking about the irritated heart of the white man. I know this is a touchy subject because there's a lot of things going on in this world nowadays. You got Black Lives Matter, NFA. You got all these people out there arguing, fussing, fighting. You know, going through all these different things. The election is today. We got Veterans Day coming up. So just a lot going on in the climate out there. But I just felt compelled and led to share a part of my journey and what I'm doing and what I got going on with you, the veteran, because I believe that what I'm about to talk about can help you out, especially if you're a white veteran. It can help you out too, black veteran, because it can help you understand why you may have had a bad experience with a white veteran or, and it can also explain why the white man had an issue with the black man. I know this is a touchy subject. I know it's something that is hard to listen to, or, you know, you may be trying to, you know, figure out in your mind, why is brother Vince talking about this? Well, I'm talking about it because I feel compelled to talk about it. One, two, I just want to make sure that I help, my brothers and sisters out because I believe that this is a hot topic and it needs to be talked about because there's a lack of understanding that I, along with you have had for a long time. And the thing that we had a hard time understanding is who is responsible for why the white man, not all, but some have an air in a, a, in a hatred towards black folks. Most of us didn't know. Most of us, don't know. Most of us do know, but wherever, wherever you fit in on that time, on that line, this right here is more so for those who don't know why. And this is to bring understanding and clarity so that you can be free from inner hatred towards black folks or black man. You can be free from hating the white man because you feel like he hates you. So let's go to this book that I'm reading called No Apology Necessary, written by Dr. Earl Carter. So if you want to read this book, please go to Earl Carter Ministry, pick up this book, pick up other books that he written. Like, share, subscribe to his YouTube channel and support the man of God, because I believe that he's a voice for our time that need to be heard as well as Pastor G. Craig Lewis, who has a documentary called Color of Blood, which I'm going to put those things down in the description so you don't have to go search and seek and trying to figure out where could you find that and get this material, man, because it will benefit and bless your life like it's blessing mine because it has truly helped me out. And let's begin. The black man and the white man are not united in the United States so far in this writing. We have learned that the black man is under curse of prophecy until he comes to Christ. But the white man is also the victim of our prophecy. He is suffering from an irritated heart. Son of man, take up a limitation of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say unto him, I will also vex the heart of many people when I shall bring the destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. Ezekiel 32. Two and nine. That's where the white man irritated heart came from for the black man. Now, most people may be asking, are you sure that's what happened? Well, according to the scriptures, this is what has happened. And I believe in the Bible in its entirety. So if the Bible says it, that's what it is. So white man, KKK. Um, white nationalists, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Whatever group of, you know, white person that you may be Nazi, whoever, if you're trying to figure out why you have this built in inner hatred towards black folks, it's not something that happened due to your own doing. God allowed it to happen. And you may be asking why it's because God's people, as I stated in my last video, who's responsible for slavery. God allowed it to happen because his people, Egypt, 
Ethiopians, um, they were actually caught in idolatry. And because God was upset with them, he had a plan to enslave them so that they can be free because the Bible said God chastised those whom he loved. So this is what happened. This is why you're walking around with this inner hatred and you don't even understand why. Just as well as I was walking with inner hatred towards black folks, maybe a slight and minor hatred towards white folks, but it was all scriptural because anytime a person's under a curse, there are certain things that they just naturally do and they don't even understand why. So God vexed the heart of the white man in order to execute and fulfill his prophecy on the Egyptians. Just like God vexed the heart of Pharaoh against the Israelites. Remember when Moses said the people was trying, it was get um, sent on a mission to set God's people free. Remember that, and remember God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Well, he hardened the heart of white men. That's what happened. He vexed the heart of many against the black. And today the white man is suffering from a vexed heart, irritated heart against the black man. The KKK or the Ku Klux Klan, as they say, and all erroneous groups are suffering from irritated hearts. So are many, I mean, so are many everyday white people. And I believe it's important for the white man to realize that he has not caused, he's not the cause of his irritated heart. I think there is a lot of healing and understanding that God used him as an instrument, just as he used Pharaoh as an instrument to enslave Israel. It will allow him to deal with the symptoms of his irritated heart. So white man, this is why you feel that way that you do. Black man, this is why the white man feels the way he does. He's that way because God allow it to be so. God allow it to be so. But just know that today God came to heal you, my white brother and my black brother, from that hatred that you have in your heart. And in the same chapter, it talks about healing for the vexed heart. Just as it is hard to believe, God would allow black people to suffer. So it is hard to believe that God will put a vexed heart that is so horrendous in white people. But he did it to execute punishment. He raised up the white man and vexed his heart because he hates sin. If he was willing to sacrifice his own son to take away the sins of the world, he would surely rise up a terrible, uh, raise up a terrible slave master to drive out sin of a people. For those whose heart are irritated, there is healing available. God used the irritated heart as an instrument to push the idlers of Egypt. He is the one who is the one who can remove the irritated heart through Jesus Christ. And that's the part that I just want to really pray about. And I want to pray that God would, you know, remove the irritation from your heart. I don't care if you are a Ku Klux Klan member. I don't care if you're a skinhead. I don't care if you're a so-called black Hebrew Israelite. I don't care if you're an Israelite or Jew. I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you've done, what happened. I want you to know that God is here to set your heart free. Because I believe that the truth set us all free. And when people know what the truth is, they're able to accept facts. Like for me, for instance, when I heard this truth, it was a hard pill to swallow because it was so much of black history that I didn't know growing up in South Carolina. Growing up in South Carolina, the only thing that they ever talked about was blacks being enslaved. They never one talked about how, you know, Blacks were a part of the reason why we enslaved. Nobody talked about the scriptures and the, the scripture in Ezekiel 32 verses two. Um, you can know, you can go all through all that. And, um, they never talked about how it was God's doing for us to be in slavery. Like I just thought that 
You know, um, we rest not against flesh and blood, which was part of it. I just thought it was just people who allowed demons to get in their heart and they did some evil things. And the fact of the matter is, when I go back to stories like, you know, Moses, um, during Moses' time and read about how every time God would send Moses to, you know, free his people, God would harden the heart of Pharaoh. Never one time did I think about how God can harden the heart of a white man and cause, you know, him to be against, you know, a black person or a black person versus a black person. You know, just I just couldn't see all that. But because of me reading, you know, this great book, again, this is the book. No apology necessary. This book clearly explains a whole lot about what is going on, what had happened, and how God want to set us free. And I believe that because of that knowledge that I have, it actually helped me to accept the history of slavery. At one time as a black man, man, I didn't want to really deal with that. I didn't want to hear nothing about it. I didn't want to talk about it. I rarely you know, would talk about it with my own child because I felt like, you know, they were just missing pieces that I didn't understand. So it was nothing I can do to explain to him what really happened. Only thing I could tell him is, you know, we were enslaved by white folks. And only thing I could tell him was, you know, that black people did sell, you know, black people into slavery, you know, but other, outside of that, I couldn't tell him much because I didn't know what the scripture actually said. But I believe because of a certain maturity that has happened in my life, it was the Lord's time for me to learn what actually happened. So it was on my mind to go pick up this book, No Apology Necessary by Bishop Eric Carter. And when I began to read it, man, it began to show me some things to where, man, it brought about a conviction in my heart to where I had to repent on the behalf of my ancestors and what they'd done to, you know, put us in that situation because. A lot of them, you know, they sold themselves to sorcery, witchcraft, you know, idolatry. You know, these folks did a lot of things that God wasn't pleased with. And because of that, he vexed the heart of, you know, some white men or, you know, a group of white men. And they came to Africa, you know, and, you know, met the Africans and did what they done. And the rest, you know, we know is history. And, I mean, at the end of the day, God is responsible for it. But I'm not mad at God for doing what he did because I know that all things work together for the good. So at the end of the day, I'm able to forgive the Lord, but I'm able to forgive the white man. I'm able to forgive my ancestors, myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm able to take accountability for my life and say that, you know what? Because I'm no longer under a curse because of Jesus Christ, I'm free to do whatever it is that I need to do because I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which gives me the strength. I'm no longer bound by the chains of slavery. I'm no longer under a curse because he took upon himself that curse. He, the Bible said curse was he who hung on the tree. So that curse that was once there, white men don't have to live under that curse no more because Jesus Christ is the way to be free from that curse that makes you irritated with black folks. Black folks, you can be free from the curse that keeps us living like animals, hating each other, um, you know, being, you know, being in a mindset of feeling like we dumb and different things. You don't have to be a witch to gain power, to be over the white man or to, you know, do certain things that, you know, some black folks feel like they have to do. You don't have to live like that no more. Jesus Christ came to set you free. So as I pray this prayer, just bow your heads and receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. The Heavenly Father, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord, humbling myself, Lord, because, Lord, the information that I have, Lord, it was nothing that I done to, Father God, put myself in a position, Lord, to receive this information, just as well as my brothers and sisters, Lord. It's not by our righteousness, it's not by our might, our will, but it's by your power, Lord, that we are able to be set free, Lord. So I pray that, Lord, the person who Listen to this video, Lord, heard what was spoken, Lord, that their eyes would be open, Lord. I pray that you would heal that white brother, Lord, from his hatred towards black folks. I pray that you would he heal that black brother, Lord, who points his finger at the white man because of slavery and the things that happened, Lord. 
I pray that, Lord, healing would take place, Lord, in our world, Lord, in our nation, in our country, Lord, because you said in your word, Lord, if your people, which are called by your name, will humble themselves, Lord, seek your face, turn away from their wicked ways, Lord, then will you hear from heaven and heal their land, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you will bring healing in the land of America, healing in the land of Africa, healing in the land of Europe, you know, the um the Arab countries, Lord, healing just all over, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you will heal your people, Lord, because, Lord, it's by your love and kindness that you have drawn all men unto you, Lord. So I pray that, Lord, you would draw your people, Lord, that needs your healing, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you would save, set free, and deliver your people, Lord, because, Lord, you said in your word, some vessels are for honor, some are for dishonor, Lord. So I pray that, Lord, you would heal people, Lord. I pray that that brother and sister would be able to forgive their ancestors, Lord. And I come before you, Lord, repenting on the behalf of our ancestors, Lord, and what they did to you, Lord. They sinned against you, Lord, by going after idols, Lord. And those very same idols that they once went after, Lord, we have people in our society, Lord, that are going after that same idol, Lord. And they're bringing it in through, Father God, the God that they call um, America, Lord. They're bringing it in by, Father God, people worshiping statues, images, you know, certain color groups, Lord. They're bringing it in, Father God, through, Father God, so many forms of adultery, Lord, that, Father God, it's just a shame, Lord, that the very things that you use slavery to bring us out of, Lord, people are turning back to it, Lord. So I pray that, Lord, you would set people free. I pray that, Lord, you would have mercy on souls. I pray that, Lord, you would extend your grace. And, Father God, you would help us to love our neighbors as thyself, Lord. I pray that not our will, but your will will be done, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. So this is, has been another episode of Vet Talk, man. I pray that this message will help you out. And that God's will will be done in your life. To my white brother, no apology is necessary for me. I don't need no reparations. I don't need you to say that you're sorry for what you've done. I don't need none of that. If God forgave you, I forgive you. Even if he didn't forgive you, part of my responsibility as a believer is to forgive you. So I forgive you. I forgive you. To my black brother, I know I've been through a lot growing up in the hood been through a lot of different things, but I forgive you. I understand why we have a, we had a thing because I no longer have it. I'm free in Christ, but I understand why I had this thing against you to where I, I will walk past you and not want to be bothered. You know, I forgive you. I forgive you. And I pray that black and white veterans alone, that we would come together and allow the Lord to use us to change and make a difference in our homes. If we want change in the world, it got to start at home because the Bible says charities begin at home, man. So you got, so it has to begin at home. This has been another episode with your boy, Brother Vince. Vet Talk is out. <laughs>